Hi, everyone. Let me refresh my page real quick to see if everything works, if I'm live. Looking good. So hello, everyone. It's Kathleen here. Welcome to another Pink Fresh Studio YouTube live session. Hi, Laura. And OK. Yeah. Um, so today I'm going to create another layout with the, the Simple Things collection, which I'm quite excited about because you probably know by now because I've mentioned it a bunch of times, but I don't get tired of saying it. Um, the Simple Things collection was a collaboration between Pinkfresh Studio and myself. Um, so, uh, and Inna Moriva helped design the collection. So it's pretty special for me to work with this one, but all of the new collections are beautiful and a joy to work with. Um, so let's see who's behind the Pinkfresh Studio name. It's Heather. Hi, Heather. So a few, just a few things before we get started. Um, if you've never joined a YouTube live before on the Pinkfresh channel, uh, every time we do one of those, we uh, give away a $15 gift card to the Pinkfresh, Pinkfresh Studio online shop. And all you have to do is be active in the chat. So every time you leave a comment in the chat, you get another chance another entry to win um, the $15 gift card. And if you share this video with someone, if you give it, gave it a thumbs up, which we always love, um, let us know in the chat and you get another entry. And at the end of this live, after, you know, almost, yeah, one and a half hours, um, we will announce the winner. So today, as I said, I'm going to work with the, the Simple Things collection and in the um, video description, I also put that I'm going to combine it with the new Berries and Blossoms product suite. This is, you know, I have a rough idea in mind and I thought it would be fun to combine it with this set, but I don't, I don't want to guarantee that I am going to use it. So we will see how everything works out um, in the end, because as, as always, <laughs> Um, I have a, just a very rough idea of what I'm going to do today. So anyways, um, I'm going to flip my camera so that you can see what's on my desk. And I have to admit that I scrambled uh, a little bit the last few seconds before the live. So my desk is still a bit messy. Okay, so... Um, so I have the embellishments here. I have the ephemera here, vellum ephemera, the regular cardstock die cut ephemera, and I also have the two washi tapes that come in this collection, as well as, as I said, of course, all of the embellishments. And I do have multiples of basically of all of the embellishments, because since it's, um, I don't want to say my collection, but you know, since this collection is uh, special to me, I have multiples of everything, so I have to admit that I, you know, sometimes grab from two different packs because I just threw everything together. So there might be a few die cuts that are uh, duplicates here in this tray, even though you only get one per um, if that makes sense. And same with the papers. Uh, I have, you know, <laughs> lots and lots and lots of the papers. So... Anyways, um, and I also have the six by six paper pack, which I didn't have last time. So I'm really happy about that. <clears throat> oh, and I also forgot to mention, um, if you have any questions, please leave them in, in the chat. And I, I'm i going to keep checking the chat while I'm creating um, so I can answer you. Um, but if I miss a question or if it's something that Heather also knows, then she will definitely jump in and help out. And if not, if none of us replies to you, then please just ask again. It's not that we're ignoring you. Just sometimes the comments just get lost. Um, oh, thank you, Emily. Yeah, I. so I, I'm guessing that you mean those. So you can see here. So in the package, you get one sheet of puffy stickers, but each sheet comes with like 
a few larger illustrations icons and then the small ones at, at the bottom. And these were something that I really wanted to have in the collection. So I'm really happy about those. And I used, I think this is already my third pack of those. <laughs> okay. So for today, um, I have to admit that I have a few different ideas as usual. You can see here that I have a large photo. Um, and I also have a bunch of smaller photos, some in color, some black and white. So I also have those two, for example. And then I have this one, which is kind of in between and black and white and a few others, um, you know, off, off camera. Um, because as I said, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. Um, I was thinking about, let's see. So I was thinking about using a large photo and combining lots of different pattern papers together because I have to admit that this collection is quite colorful, quite um, bright, and also a quite a few patterns that are, I would say, on the busier side. Um, so that's why I kind of, um, or why I often grab black and white photos because they always work with everything. But, you know, color photos definitely work with this collection as well. I mean, this one, for example, looks great. Um, but black and white just always goes. And I thought I might try to combine quite a few different pattern papers and maybe show you how you can incorporate um, incorporate those on a layout without making it too busy and too overwhelming. Um, so that's at least the idea. <laughs> We will see in how far um, I will be able to, to do that. So as you can see, as I mentioned, I have multiples of each paper of each embellishment. So, you know, I try to first use up one sheet before I cut into another one, but depending on how much I need of it, you know, I might, I might use more than one. <clears throat> okay. And there are a few things that are relatively obvious um, what you can do with some of the papers. So this paper, for example, has been used by lots of the design team girls already in different ways, but it's just a sun, kind of a sun ray paper always works and you can just cut those rays up, use like a photo in the center of it. You know, there have been a bunch of ideas shared on the Pink Fresh blog and Instagram with this paper, for example, already. So I'm trying to find something to show you that's different um, than what you might have seen so far with this collection. So let's see. So one idea was um, that I wanted to have, you know, I'm not sure which photo I'm going to use in the end because it also depends a bit on how the design works out, how my idea works out. And I'm going to grab a, let me grab a sh just a sh scrap piece of paper so I can sketch out my idea real quick. That's definitely easier than just explaining everything that I have in mind. Okay. So let me grab a pencil. So one idea I had was to have 12 by 12 base and then have my photo in the center and some sort of like wavy circle or not circle, but wavy shape opening sort of thing. And then, so there are a few different ideas, but this was a variations of that same idea and then have different pattern papers basically around it like so. So you would have one pattern paper here, then a different pattern here, next one here, and then finally the photo. <clears throat> so this was one idea. And then um, 
based on this, there I had a few different like variations in mind. So especially with this photo, for example, because it's quite large, I was thinking of maybe having the photo here. Sorry, um, so I spelled it the German way. So that's why I spelled it with P with F. It's not that I can't spell photo, it's just <laughs> that this is how it's spelled in German. Um and then have the photo here and then just layer different pattern paper strips or not strips, but sort of um, pieces on top of it so that it just keeps like an opening that reveals the photo and have different patterns here combined and then have some embellishments kind of like peeking out here and maybe have like a title along here, something like this. So this is basically what I have, the rough idea that I have in mind. <clears throat> and I'm thinking of trying out this version here with this photo, um, because that way I could use up some pieces that I have left of certain pattern papers, because obviously for this one, for this design idea, I need large, almost entire papers that I can then cut down. So I'm trying, I, I guess, I think I'm going to go with this. And then I hope I will be, you know, depending on how quickly things move along and how things work out, I can then incorporate the um, Berries and Blossoms product suite, which is, let me, I already put it in my MISTI. I'm just going to show you real quick. So this is the stamp set. This is the Berries and Blossoms um, stamp set, which comes with coordinating stencils and a die. And I thought that this would work really well with the collection, you know, kind of summary with the strawberries. There are also some strawberry icons in the collection. So, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, thank you. That. Uh, okay, so it seems like <laughs> you you are kind of on board with this idea. So let's see. Um, and as I said, I'm I will try to use up as many, or not as many, but try to use up um, just some papers that I already cut into and try not to cut into a new one if it's not completely necessary. So you can see this one, for example, um, has a great, you know, it's big enough for what I need, same as this. So I was thinking, you know, maybe something like this with a wavy line and then just have part of this revealed. We will see if that if this works out or if it because sometimes you know you have an idea and in the end it looks even better than you imagined and sometimes or at least for me uh and sometimes i have an idea and it just turns out like you know nothing like you imagined and you think that you know that was a total waste of time <laughs> so i hope it's not going to be the letter and i'm just going to go for it I'm going to kind of cut wavy lines into this paper. If you feel more comfortable, you could also, first of all, sketch it out with a pencil. And then I will see how this works out. So I'm not worried about, you know, this part here where it doesn't cover the photo because I can just co cover this up with a different pattern paper. So I'm just going to start... Um, you know, just arranging things and then we will see. This is like just an experiment. And I'm going to try to make it as wavy with, you know, I want smooth wavy lines. I don't want any edges or anything. And sort of have like this part here revealed of the photo. Or maybe, maybe not even, not only in this 
So here I sketched it out that I would put pattern papers just like in this diagonal sense, but I'm thinking of maybe doing this and just creating like a big frame, basically. And I really hope this works out. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so let's see. I'm thinking of maybe layering this on top of this one. Or, oh, but I also like the stripes. I do like the stripes. But I wanna make sure that I get the correct, um, like, what is it called? Orientation of the stripes which I think I'm not doing right now. Nope. You're probably thinking, what in the heck is she doing? In my mind, it's making sense, but you know. So here you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So I want to have like different designs revealed. You could definitely, if you only have smaller strips, you could definitely cut like just the strip here of the stripe paper, for example. You don't have to have a complete piece covered by another piece, which, you know, I would normally do. But right now I'm just trying things out. So I don't want to make my life too difficult. So I hope you are, you know, on board with this idea and that you will wait until, until the end to see how it turns out. So I'm thinking of having, you know, another piece here that maybe, so this time I am going to sketch it out. The nice thing about this design idea is that you don't have to be accurate. You can, you know, make use of whatever you have left. And when cutting, you don't have to be exact. You don't have to be precise. You can just cut, which sometimes is also nice when you don't have to think too much. And I might not want, you know, all of the um, patterns on here because some are maybe a little bit too busy and too overpowering or maybe the colors are a bit too much for this. I'm gonna look through the six by six paper pattern because even though I said I don't want to cut into a new piece of paper, you know, maybe there is one here that works better in a small, on a small scale. So let's see. I don't want things that are too busy. So this one, for example, is a bit too much for my taste for, you know, this layout here. But I think this one would work nicely as well. I'm gonna cut off, let's see. I don't want to make the frame too big because at the same time, I also don't want to like fill the whole page and just leave a tiny opening because then I feel like the photo is going to get lost.
Natalie, you know when you are watching my YouTube lives, my process videos, you are going to hear the words not precise, eyeball, no measuring, and so on a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not one for measuring too much. <clears throat> So now I need something maybe, you know, I, I think I'm going to cut this one down a little bit more because I don't want to cover up my son completely because I just think it's really cute how he looks there running towards me. So more like this and then again, eyeballing. I'm not measuring. I'm not even making sure that the lines are straight. This is something that I can worry about at the end. Right now, I'm still kind of figuring out the whole design idea. So let's see. Maybe I can make use of this piece right here. So let's see what other papers I have that I already cut into because again I don't want to sorry my desk is a mess and things just keep falling <clears throat> So this one definitely would look nice, but at the same time, I just, I don't know, even though I have multiples of this one, I just don't want to cut into this. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe this one. I, so before anyone freaks out, you know, things are going to be a lot more straight than they are right now. So right now I'm really just throwing thing, things on, on my page and just trying to work out if this whole idea works out. Um, but even though I eyeball most of the things, um, even when I like glue something down, I often measure afterwards just because I'm curious how, you know, how well I did. And I have to admit that, you know, 99% of the time, it's almost perfect. So over the years, it seems like I have developed quite a good eye for, you know, telling if something is straight, if the distance is correct and so on. So even though I'm not measuring, doesn't mean <laughs> that things are not straight or... Um, <clears throat> Okay, so in the six by six paper pad, you get all of the designs twice. So they are double sided, but you get each paper. So it's the same paper as the 12 by 12, just shrunk down. Um, so you get them twice. So I feel like, you know, maybe I can just use, um, use one of those instead of like the whole, the big one, especially since here I have the gradient on a, um, smaller scale so I get more of the different colors and I don't know why but somehow for some reason this this paper right here it doesn't for me it doesn't work with the rest of the papers um, I could make it work by bringing in more of this color but 
instead, I think I'm just going to try to limit my color scheme to these colors. So this sort of yellow, the kind of cornflower blue, pink, and just this really, just a tiny bit of this um, sort of coral, whatever you would call it, color. Uh, but I still need something to close the gap here. And I'm still not, you know, convinced if this is um, by this idea, I have to say. So we will just, I will just keep working on it a little bit. And I do have a plan B that I might be able to make work relatively quickly. <laughs> Now this one is quite busy, but it does have all of the colors that I need. So I'm just gonna give it a try. And I'm also not worried about, you know, if you have just like small openings like this, where your patterns don't, or your, sorry, your papers don't overlap, um, this is not a big issue because in the end, when we start embellishing, this is, a you know, something where you can simply put an embellishment and no one will be able to tell that there's no paper there. Um, I'm going to turn on my lights real quick because it is getting a little bit, not really dark, but too dark for my you know, taste. Okay, give my camera just a few seconds to kind of adjust, but I think we should be fine. I'm sorry about the shadows. That's the only, you know, downside to it, but it's really kind of straining, sorry, straining on, on my eyes to have to work in this sort of, I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. Okay, so one more piece there and then I will... I'm not giving up on this piece here. Because I do want to have more layers. So I don't only want to have like this sort of thing, but I don't want to make it too busy. So... So maybe I can bring in the, you know, if I just grab a different area of this paper here. So now we do have a full frame. As I said, things are going to be straight in the end. Um, but before I adhere anything down, I want to make sure that my idea is working. Um, but I feel like I have to cut this down a little bit more just so that it's not extended all the way to the bottom and the top of this 12 by 12 sheet. So I'm gonna cut off part of this as well. I want a little bit more waves. And as I said, you could definitely draw the lines with a pencil if you don't feel confident doing the waves, you know, like freehanding them. Um, if you're worried that they will be too, too wavy, not wavy enough, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, so that definitely an option. <clears throat> so let's see where I can bring in a few more layers. So you can see here, so this is what I have, a piece of that I have left, a piece that I have left of this paper, which is called Take Note, because on the back you have these uh, sort of notepad, uh, sorry, notes, yeah, notes. Um, so let's see how I can sort of make it 
peek out from underneath here. Okay, I think, you know, things are starting to come along. <clears throat> so I will, so this is just a tape runner, which is not too sticky. It's not really permanent. So I am just going to adhere a few things down so that not all of the pieces keep moving on me. So just that I can kind of keep the layers together and again I'm going to cut a part of it off because I don't want to cover that much of my son because I just love his little feet there <laughs> so I can also open up a little bit here and then just cut part of that off so and as I said, you could definitely, like I did here with the sunshines uh, or the sun paper, um, you could definitely use just a strip of a pattern paper. You don't have to, you know, use full pieces like I'm doing here. But just for the sake of time and not driving myself too crazy on this, and also you. <laughs> I'm just going to go with this. And again, so, so these lines are going to be straight. I will cut this with a paper trimmer in the end. It's just, I'm just trying to, um, to figure out how large I need those pieces to be. <clears throat> so I will try to bring in, you know, most of, at least most of the patterns, not all of the patterns, um, maybe, you know, twice so that they repeat in some, on some part of the layout, and then, you know, just just have different paper, uh, patterns repeated, give it a little bit more of a uniform-ish look. <laughs> Sorry, just noticed that my... <clears throat> Um, and it was a little bit off camera and see that's why I kind of glued some of the pieces together because otherwise things will just keep moving okay what else I think again I'm not going to repeat all the papers so I feel like this is sort of not you know they are two different patterns, but they are both on white and both the same colors. So I feel like this kind of can count as, in, you know, twice or a two, two of the same-ish paper. Then I have this one twice. I have this one twice, the sun. So it's basically only those two left that I haven't repeated. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to repeat this one, maybe the pink one just in a corner or something. So let's see. And I'm just, you know, I'm just cutting it off. I will start by doing this and then I can figure out what I can do with it. I don't want to do too much thinking. I don't know why I have two white card stocks on top of each other. Okay. 
ね、ピン Just kind of cleaning up the edges a little bit. Now I feel like I need, at least on one of the sides, I need another layer to these pieces because I have everything in two or three layers. So maybe one more. Maybe I will try to bring in this blue again. And actually, so although it's really nice that I have, you know, multiples of every paper, um, it does make things a little bit more difficult when you're trying to find something. <laughs> because everything right now is just kind of thrown together. I'm trying to figure out if I have a smaller piece of that paper. And don't worry, I will start adhering things in a second so that, you know, everything is a little bit more secure and doesn't move all the time. Trying to see if... I feel like I need something. But I am almost done with this sort of frame design. And the rest will be layering in embellishments. And then, you know, I think I'm good on time to to do some, some work with the Berries and Blossoms product suite. Now I am bringing in a different pattern that I haven't, don't have on my page so far, but it's a little bit more neutral because it's just the greens. And I do have the green here in this paper as well. So you know what, I'm just gonna try and glue things down now and then we will see. We will see if, if we like it or not. Um, and I'm gonna take, so this is just a piece of copy paper, printer paper. Uh, I'm gonna take this and glue everything down here so that I can then have one piece that I can put on my 12 by 12 cardstock um, because I like to have things popped up and I don't want to deal with all of those little things. So I would just want to have one large piece that I can move around. <clears throat> so I hope that even though it's a bit experimental, I hope that you are liking it so far. I have to admit that I'm still not 100% convinced. Um, you know, sometimes things just take a little bit more time and more effort. And sometimes you just have to kind of trust the process. <laughs> and sometimes 
even at the end of the process, things still don't look right. So we will see um, how it's how it's going to turn out this time. So let me just, I'm going to put this here um, so that I can have, because obviously the printer paper is a little bit smaller than the frame that I, I'm going to create. But this way I can actually um, make sure that things are straight, mostly. So this will be covered anyway with the printer paper. Um, so now I can use the lines on my cutting mat to make sure that I am putting these on, you know, more or less straight. And I did cut them all by hand, so I might have to clean up some of the edges later with my paper trimmer. And just making sure that I, so as I said, I don't want to make it too large. So I do want to have a little bit of a white border around this colorful frame, because otherwise I feel like it's just too much. Um, so let's, let's see. And another thing, if you've seen any of my videos so far, you will know that, um, but don't glue, if you try a design like this, and you try this whole thing with the with the printer paper and everything. Um, don't glue down the pieces like completely. Don't put adhesive all the way to the edge of your like of the pieces because you will need to kind of stack things. You will need to um, put something like this one. I need to be able to slide this underneath. So definitely leave some wiggle room and you can always come back in later with some liquid adhesive, for example, and just, you know, put a little bit under here and then make sure that things are stuck down once you are sure that this is, you know, how you want it to be. So I am just putting one piece of double-sided tape more or less in the center of this piece. And then just kind of making sure that it's, you know, more or less straight. And then, as I said, I can always come back in later and add some adhesive, but I'm not going to do it right now because I also want to add some embellishments later on. And um, these will, or I want to have some of them kind of peek out from underneath. <laughs> so, again, oh, wait, I almost forgot. I cut this one as well, so. Don't want to have this part up here. Just want the green. So you can see here that this is larger than I need, um, but I will cut it in the end. Now that wasn't too smart. <clears throat> Okay, so now we are working our way around the whole thing, sticking everything down. And on the bottom, I think I had this piece, but I will have to move it. Let's see, so I had this one, and then I have this one, I think, like so. I think I moved that piece here. I think I moved those two a little bit too much to the top, but we will make it work. You know, if I had just used my tape runner, that might've been a better choice because then I would be able to kind of 
take off these pieces and just move them someplace else without damaging the papers too much. But I'm, I'm going to figure it out. As I said, I'm in my, I'm in, in what's the adjective of it? Experim, hmm. how do you say it in English? Experimentative <laughs> mood? What's the ad adjective for wanting to experiment? I need help. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to make sure that I don't cover up, as I said, too much of, you know, this part isn't too, that important on my photo. So I, it would have been better to move those two pieces a little bit further down. Um, but I didn't. It is what it is. But I want to make sure that I don't cover up too much of myself and my son because I feel like the photo loses loses something if um if I, we are cut off so i definitely want to make sure that i you know don't do that too much and i will so i talked about that earlier so i will just make sure that i'm going to put some sort of embellishment here that fills the gap but that way i don't have to um push this piece here too much to the inside where it covers up my son Experimental? Really? That is... Okay. So experimental. It is. Because in, in German, that would be a different sort of adjective. So experimental would mean that a thing is... Um, um, like, was made... During during an experiment or something, but you can still be in an experimental mood, which would be a different adjective in German. Anyway, <clears throat> not sure if you can tell that I also so I did study um, English and Spanish in, at university, uh, actually to become a teacher, which I'm not anymore. But I did finish my studies, um, and part of that university of those university studies was linguistics, which was my favorite part of, you know, both languages. So I am really interested in that sort of thing. Okay, you know what? So first of all, I'm going to just kind of glue down just like the, the corners here. And don't worry, it looks a bit, you know, rough right now. But we will cut this down a little bit. So first of all, obviously, I am going to cut down the copy paper that's showing here, because we don't need that part. And then don't worry about that. I will figure out a way to cover it because I don't want to put another pattern paper in there. I will cover it with some sort of embellishment. Now, the only issue I have right now is that I do want to cut these edges with a paper trimmer to make sure they are really straight, but I have two or three layers of paper at some points. Um, and this one, is probably going to rip my paper and kind of jerk it. So it's going to have some edges. So I do want to get my um, guillotine trimmer. So give me a second. I'm just going to grab that. I don't use it too often, or at least not the large one. I do have the small one and the large one. And I usually only use the large one for kind of 
preparing um, for workshops when I have to cut a lot of papers. <laughs> but it definitely gives you a cleaner edge um, without kind of um, moving your paper. Okay, so let's see. Okay, moment of truth. Looks good, looks straight. Again, this I am going to cover up or I will find some piece of pattern paper to cover that part. Let's see. Still a little bit too large for my taste. I'm going to cut it down a little bit at, at the top. And I'm not, again, I'm not really measuring, so I don't have a certain size in mind that I want this to be. I am just trying it out, seeing if I like this or if I feel like it needs to be even, um, even smaller. So maybe I can, don't worry. This part is going to be covered. <laughs> so I am just moving it ever so slightly, still not covering up myself. Um, that sounds weird, like on the photo. <laughs> It did have a little bit of trouble down here because this is four layers of pattern paper. All right. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that now. All right. So this is another advantage of, you know, when you use just strips of the papers instead of layering them completely, you don't have to cut through, you know, three or four layers of, of um, cardstock when you are cutting your your um, frame down. Okay, so I will put some foam behind it. And since this is completely covered, I can use a foam color that, you know, is something that I wouldn't use for um, where it, where it might peak out, but here, so because I really don't want to waste my foam tape on something like this because I need quite a large area of 
foam adhesive. Um, and I don't want to use my foam tape for that. So I have just this sort of kids craft foam that is adhesive on one has adhesive on one side. Um, and I can cut it down to whatever size I need. And, you know, it gives me quite large panels. Isn't that expensive? And yeah, but, it, you know, each pack has lots of different colors. So there are some colors that I only use when I know it won't be visible um, in any way. Thank you, Susie. Um, Susie, Susie, sorry if it's, uh, okay. And I will put just a, a, some, so on the, you can see here that the corners are sagging a little bit. So this is where I'm going to put my, my good um, foam adhesive. Because that's where it is visible, or you know, a little bit more visible at least. So I will put just a little bit of foam adhesive in the corners so that they don't sag. And that way I can save on my good foam adhesive and not waste too much of it. Now that was not clever. I already took off the protective film. I didn't want to do that. Because first of all, I need to figure out where to put it. So I'm just going to put a few pieces, as I said, around the edge. Okay. Now, trying to make sure that it's centered without getting a T-square ruler and trying not to put my head in front of the camera too much. Normally, I have to say, um, normally I would probably gut this white cardstock and cut part of it out that is covered by this large piece to save it for something else. But right now I really just want to save time. But I am usually, um, you know, quite, what's the word, frugal? Is that the correct word? Trying to make, you know, the most of my um, material products and so on. And I just re uh, realized I didn't put any, I really am a little bit, I don't know, <laughs> sorry, a little bit out of it today. I didn't put any adhesive on the, on the kids craft foam. I mean, it is adhesive, on, has adhesive on one side, but it does not. <laughs> and six of those small foam squares are not going to be enough to keep it in place. So yeah, I feel like I need coffee. I feel like my brain is shutting down. So I hope I'm not going to make any more mistakes along the way. But then again, I feel like, you know, maybe it helps to see someone else struggling <laughs> and if that can help you to know that you are not alone if you do struggle sometimes as well while creating then it's all worth it okay now that's just me and emily um <laughs> i can't have coffee right now i have to wait until after the live and then, you know, I'm greeted by those two die cut pieces in my tray, the coffee cup and the coffee maker. Anyway. All right. So let's get to embellishing. Um, I don't want to dilly dally <laughs> uh, anymore. So let's see. So I do have the, so these are the layered stickers. And I'm trying to figure out you know because I need some larger pieces to cover up the holes in here um, 
Or maybe I can do the I love us. It does get a little bit lost, but then again, it also kind of just kind of fits into this little nook here. So I am going to keep it. Oh, definitely happy accidents. Happy accidents, embellishment opportunities, you know. And in the end, I always say it's just paper. You know, it's not the end of the world if you cut something wrong, if something doesn't turn out the way you expected it. It's just paper. So these are the vellum die cuts. And I feel like, you know, I have, I have half an hour left. So I'm not sure if I will bring in the other sort of berries and blossoms product suite. Um, and I also feel like this is, it's still busy, you know, even though I only used smaller pieces of the different pattern papers, it is a busy design which is also why I don't want to overdo it with the embellishing. Um, so I feel like maybe bringing in the berries and blossoms might be too much, or it might be the perfect thing to do. So I did go ahead before the live. I already prepared one set of this. I already stamped it once. And heat embossed it with white detail embossing powder because I thought I might use the Pinkfish Studio watercolors um, to color some of the images so that they coordinate with the colors that I'm using on the layout. So I am thinking of doing that because if I keep them mostly white, they may be the perfect embellishment. So I am a little bit torn. I, I agree with you, Susie. So I, I don't think it needs a lot of embellishing because again, it is quite busy and you know, I don't want to overdo it. But just a few, just a few things here and there that kind of peek out. Um, and maybe just one or two. Um, things. I mean, I still need something that kind of covers this part. I could try the piece of patterned paper. Or maybe this one and then just layer some flower or plant behind it. You know, something like this. Might look nice. Let's see. So I'm just sticking this hard sock sticker on just some scrap paper to kind of get rid of the sticky and because I want to add some dimension behind it to make it stand out a little bit from, you know, all of those busy, busy pieces. And I have to say, if this was, if I was creating this, you know, just on my own time, not during a live while no one's watching, I would probably have started over and, or maybe abandoned the whole idea um, in the process. I have to admit that. Uh, I don't, I do want to be honest and I don't want to kind of um, make you feel like I'm always in love with what I create because, I mean, it would be great if that was the case, but it just isn't. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I'm just going to, I mean, I don't really have another choice, <laughs> but I am going to stick with it. I am going to... to do just a little bit of embellishing and try to make it work.
just looking through if I can find any more pieces that are, you know, that fits the color scheme and the theme of the layout. <clears throat> Just checking the comments real quick. Okay, I think I didn't miss anything. So since I don't want to add too many embellishments, I am just trying to create maybe one, one or two clusters. Um, and by the way, this piece right here, these pink flowers, they are actually from the, where did I put them? Where did I put them? There. Uh, and they are actually from the layered stickers. Um, so I, you know, from a different package. Uh, I just took this part off. So you have each sticker has two layers. And if you don't want to use the whole piece, or if, for example, if the phrase doesn't work for you, you can just take it off. And you could even, you know, for example, take off this butterfly and use it on its own. So you don't have to use the whole thing. Uh, you can do whatever you want with your embellishments. Um, you paid for them. <laughs> they are yours. You can cut them up and do whatever you like. Um, oh, thank you, Kathy, uh, that you love the collection, uh, the, sorry, the embellishments in this collection. Um, I am, I am pretty happy with, you know, how they turned out and what we came up with. Um, so yeah, let's see. I, again, I don't want to put too many embellishments. So I'm trying to look for a few more larger pieces so that I don't, I don't want to use a lot of embellishments, but maybe just some larger ones, if that makes sense. And I was actually looking for these, but I feel like they would get lost, even though I love them, um, the puffy title stickers. But you can see here that they have this sort of ombre rainbow color um uh scheme and i think they would get lost in between all of those patterns i don't know Something's not something's not working here. And again, I'm this is probably going to be a layer that I will kind of tinker a bit with uh, after the live. Sometimes I don't do too much to it, maybe just add a few more enamel dots or something like that, but I feel like you know I might do a few things until I am happy with it uh, after the life because you know I don't have a ton of time obviously um black letters so first of all I don't have any black letters actually I don't think that there have been black alpha stickers in a pink fresh studio collection I don't want to say ever but at least not in the last I would say two years three years even. I do have the dark green ones, so they would work as well because I have this green here. They are dark. They would stand out. But right now I have to admit that I'm not even sure what I would spell with them. And sometimes I am perfectly fine with not having a large title, but rather have something like this that has a phrase on it that can work as my sort of title. So um, yeah, I'm not... You know, 
I rarely put a title during my lives if it's not something like this ready made, simply because I want to have some time to kind of think about it um, before I add it. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, I think so. You can, if you look through the collection, you will see that. At first, I feel like you might get the impression that it's a very bold collect or like a collection with, with very bold colors. But once you take a closer look at it, you will see that it does have quite a few more pastel, more um, softer colors. And you can play around with the different color schemes. Um, yeah. So actually, that's one you and I. I mean, it's not the most creative title in the world, definitely not. And I will have, I will, I probably used it a bunch of times already. But maybe I use this. But then again, I just noticed that we didn't put any ampersands in this pet, and I don't want to spell out you and I. So I am going to abandon this idea again. And do what I always do when I'm not sure what to do next, which is put embell uh, en enamel dots on it. I do want to put something here in the top left to have maybe something like this, um, like two clusters. And then it would also sort of repeat this kind of diagonal line. But right now I can't find anything that I like and I don't want to, um, you know, waste your time and kind of drive you crazy by going back and forth a whole bunch of times between different things, which I would do if, again, if this was, um, if I was doing this on my own without anyone watching. So puppy stickers to the rescue, because that's why I wanted those small ones. Because you will always find one in the color you need. You will always find quite a few small ones. And you can just kind of scatter them around. And I fill, um, you know, fill some empty spaces or just add a little touch of color somewhere. Um, oh, see, Emily, exactly. <laughs> I have to admit that right now my brain, it really does feel like it's its kind of freezing up because I don't know. I just can't think right now. I can't really think of different ideas of different ways to maybe create another cluster. So I am very sorry about that. And I know that this might be... Um, you know, disappointing <laughs> when you are watching a live and kind of want to see a finished product. But in the end, I have to admit that sometimes things just don't work out exactly like you envisioned it. And it's, I don't know, um, when it was the last time that I you know, felt this kind of unsure about it, about the project, about what to do next. So I am sorry about that, but it is what it is. I can't change it. Yeah. 
if I am trying to think of a way to still use the smaller ones for a title, but maybe we have, I what I might do, so let's see. Where did I put it? So what I was thinking is maybe use this sort of, uh, frame, die cut a circle. So this is just a placeholder right now. Uh, die cut a circle from some white cardstock and maybe use a cover plate die to put some texture on it that I could put here and then use this for a place as a place for my title or for my journaling even, and then just put my title around here. We didn't put any ampersand in the small alphas either. You know what? So I do have 15 minutes left. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's see. I am going to see real quick if I have, so these are my cover plate dies and usually I keep, as you can see here, I keep like um, leftovers from die cuts, I, uh, pieces and so on. I keep in the same package so that I can use them for something else. And so I am going to peel off the sticky layer of this frame. <clears throat> So I don't want to use like this colored part here. I do want it to be white. And I feel like this is a, has a bit, you know, the, the cutouts are a bit too big. Um, I don't want to have like actual holes in it. I just want some texture. So I am going to grab a piece of white cardstock. Sorry about that. And my die cutting machine. And I will use this. This is the stitched octagons. I haven't used that one yet. Well, actually, I can I see here that it was part of the Create and Connect from February this year so it's not something i i'm not sure if it has been released in the shop yet or if there are plans to release it um so i'm not going to use it just to be fair <laughs> so that you can use you know if you wanted to recreate this look that you could actually buy whatever dye i'm using So I am going to go ahead and use the hexagon tile. And you can see my plates are a little bit short. That doesn't matter. Kind of scrambling. <laughs> I feel like it's too much. But then again, I feel like nothing is gonna really work right now because I don't know. I I feel like I'm just in a funk. So let's do one more thing. and cut some of the curvy leaves, which is, I think, my most used dye from Pinkfish Studio, or dye set, um, because it just always works. And it's usually the perfect addition 
for when I don't know what else to put. <laughs> Oh, no, not the berries and blossoms. Um, I was talking about the stitched octagons cover plate, cover plate die. So I'm not sure if that one has been released or will be released or whatever. So I am not, not going to go. I'm not going to use it today. But the berries and blossoms is a beautiful set. And I might, you know, off camera after the live, I might try and watercolor some of the pieces and see if they might work as embellishments. Sorry for that, but I am lazy when it comes to getting my die cuts out of the dies. So I usually just smack them on my table. So this is the curvy leaves and I feel like, you know, when they, when you cut them from white cardstock or sorry, whether you cut them from white cardstock, from colored cardstock, from vellum, they look great in die cut from vellum. They always add the perfect little something without being too much. So that's what I was kind of thinking now, now, yeah. I'm liking this. I did want something. I did want some kind of embellishment, but I didn't want more color. I like that, Heather. Yeah, not lazy, efficient. Definitely. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, much Beth. Um, I'm really glad that you feel like um, you learned something from these lives, even if you don't see a finished... Um, project and I completely agree with you I mean sometimes I get so many ideas from people just seeing their process um, and not maybe necessarily the the finished project um, but I still feel kind of bad presenting something and not kind of having that big ta-da moment um, but this is what I was kind of missing I wanted texture I wanted something I wanted to have something flowy but not more color so I am I am a lot happier right now <laughs> and feeling better so I am going to go ahead and cut a second set Trying to make the most of this perfect of that scrap piece of white cardstock. Sorry for the shaking. So you could definitely, so if, let's say, there wasn't so much color and pattern on this page already, um, these would also look great combined with uh, watercolors, for example, to maybe just give them just some light color. So I'm trying to follow sort of the, like the curves and the waves of the papers with my with the little leaves. So I am kind of 
trying to find pieces that have the same curve, the same direction. Thank you so much, Laura. You're all very nice to me, right? <laughs> that's kind of, that's really uplifting to, you know. <clears throat> but sometimes you, I, I mean, I think we all have those days where nothing seems to go the way you want it, the way you, um, the way you imagined, so. Okay, so I have this one larger cluster here. And I feel like I can keep this maybe for my title. Um, and just leave it at that. And then I could do my journaling, maybe like on the side on this part here that is a little bit more neutral, or maybe even on this pattern, or you could also do some journaling along the edge around the frame or maybe just, you know, part of it here. If you planned ahead a little, if you plan ahead a little bit more, you could even um, maybe glue one of those pieces down just along the edge and then use um, some die cut piece like this tag, for instance, and kind of slide it in that you can pull out for some hidden journaling. So, you know, there's lots of different ways you can include journaling on a, on a layout like this. Thank you, Natalie, for joining me. Have fun on your walk. Um, I'm so glad that you know that you are taking something from this and that I'm, I'm happier with this now. <laughs> I didn't glue down the white leaves yet I will do that off camera because you know you don't need to watch me glue down leaves that's not too exciting um so I will just play around a little bit more to see if there's anything else I want to add so I think you know off camera I might add a few small pieces here and there maybe one or two more die cuts but in the end it's probably going to stay more or less like this so because it is quite busy already I don't want to overdo it I still want my photo to be the focus of this and I can I'm sorry about the glare on the photo so I would try to carefully kind of hold it up to the camera without moving all of those white leaves so this is where it's at right now um, again might add just a small title somewhere, maybe a few small, more, a few more small embellishments like the puffy stickers or enamel dots, but nothing, nothing major. And I will share the finished project um, on my Instagram and probably also on the, in the Facebook group, in the Pink Fresh Studio Fan, Pink Fresh Studio Fans Facebook group. Um, so definitely check it out then. And I would love to know what you think of it, um, you know, of how it turned out then. And one more heart for good measure. Trying to figure out if... Hmm. Actually, I like that. I will put the heart directly on my photo. That is a risk, but it's kind of centered in between my son and myself. So I will keep it like this. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to turn my camera real quick and see if Heather announced a winner. Okay, sorry about the glare. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Susie, Susie Sonye, Sonye, sorry if I butcher your name. Um, you won today's $15 gift card. Congratulations. 
just email leah at pinkfreshstudio.com to claim your price and then happy shopping. And again, I'm going to share the finished project in the coming days on my Instagram. And I thank you very much for joining me. I hope I didn't drive you too crazy. I hope you still enjoyed this video, even though it's been a bit, you know, bumpy um, and maybe not as straightforward as it is sometimes, <laughs> not all the time. Um, but in any case, I had fun and yeah, I hope to see you again next time. So in two weeks, it's going to be Natalie again. And in four weeks, it's going to be me again. And I think next, the next YouTube live is going to be next Tuesday. And I think it's going to be Leah, but don't, I'm not going to, you know, um, don't quote me on that. All right. So thank you, everyone. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining. Take care. Bye.